Our top story, Victoria has recorded another 66 cases of coronavirus as reports of a super spreader emerge. Let's go live to Patrick Marrow and Pat. The government isn't ruling out additional lockdowns. That's right, 66 new cases of coronavirus in Victoria over the past 24 hours. And while a majority of these are in those 10 lockdown postcodes, there are, they are still appearing elsewhere, including in postcode 3031, which is the Kensington-Flemington area. That's in the top four transmissions uh, by postcode over the past 24 hours. No lockdown there, though. Testing is continuing right across the state, in excess of 20,000 tests being completed a day. Worryingly, though, there are still many, including in these hotspot zones, that are refusing tests. We've learned since the testing blitz, the door-knocking campaign began, 10,000 people have refused a test, often for reasons including thinking coronavirus is a conspiracy or that the disease won't affect them. They may have already been tested in a different location. We are analysing that data uh, to, uh, to see uh, uh, exactly why people are refusing. Uh, but it is concerning that the report that I have received is that some people believe that coronavirus is a conspiracy or that it won't impact on them. Earlier this week, we heard that genomic testing had led scientists in Victoria to discover that a vast majority, a substantial number of cases could be linked back to breaches from the hotel quarantine program. Now we understand the health department is examining the theory that a single super spreader may be responsible for nearly all the cases around the northwest corridor. That's where the hotspot zones are, those lockdown suburbs are. That is just a theory at the moment, but one that is actively being examined by the Department of Health and Contact traces at the moment. The Andrews government hasn't ruled out extending the lockdown or expanding it to further suburbs, including this postcode of 3031 over the weekend, if the situation continues to deteriorate. Many hours over the weekend will be spent uh, analysing, considering, uh, discussing back and forth uh, what the status of other postcodes are. Uh, I've tried to be as upfront as I can in saying I certainly cannot rule out other suburbs being shut down. So a lot of uh, questions answered, of course, in a pretty long news conference, but the government not too keen to get into some of the details around the hotel quarantine. That's right. We're going to be hearing a lot of let's wait until we hear what the inquiry has to say over the next few weeks. Uh, today, the press conference with the Premier and the Health Minister, we all asked uh, the simple question of which department was uh, responsible for the management of contracts between the government and private security firms. Of course, we have heard a lot of salacious allegations come out of that mangled hotel quarantine program, including that guards were having intimate relationships with guests who were supposed to be in isolation, that some of them were allowed out of quarantine and that guards were provided with little or no training. The hotels involved have passed the buck onto the government. They said that they were all in charge of the management of private security contracts. When asked if her department was the one in charge of those contracts, Jenny McCarkos said, no, nope, it's not the health department, but wouldn't answer specifically which government department was. There was a similar response from the Premier as well. What I can say to you, it's not my department, OK? Uh, you, you ask me a question and I'm saying to you, it's not DHHS. And that is why, and that is why it's important that the judicial inquiry completes its work, explains what role every agency played. It is not a matter of necessarily one single department being responsible for this. Late yesterday, we saw Stanford Plaza, one of the quarantine hotels, issue a statement absolving themselves of any responsibility with regards to the actions of private security firms and the management of those contracts. This afternoon, as well, Ridges on Swanston has issued a similar statement where they point the finger at the government and say that they have been managing the contract. They say Ridges on Swanston has been closed to guests since the 27th of March 2020 and has been operating under the direction of the Department of Jobs, Precincts and Regions and the Department of Health and Human Services as a quarantine hotel at the request of the Victorian government. Of course, this will all be the subject of the inquiry. Not everyone happy with the way that this is unfolding. However, the opposition saying that the scope of the inquiry is too narrow and that it should be examining not only government departments, but specific ministers as well. There's no indication that this inquiry has got any power to compel uh, people to attend, compel the production of documents either. This isn't an inquiry, this is a cover-up. The opposition has called on Health Minister Jenny McCarkos to resign. Patrick Merrill, thank you.